Well, welcome to episode one. Yeah, one of many more to come of Life Seeds. Uh, once again, my name is Frank Virginia, a.k.a. Frankie Flowers, and joining me is my co-host, my partner in crime, Amanda Weldon. Weldon. Yes. <laughs> I was like, do I go? Do you go? Do I go? We're working. We're working through this as we go, guys. So, yeah. Frankie, what is Life Seeds? Well, it all started with an idea. Now, Life Seeds is all about learning lessons from the garden, how they apply to our lives. So the whole goal of this podcast is to give you some lessons on how to make you a better gardener and how to help you grow great things indoors and out. But also some of those little things that I've learned from the garden and yourself have learned in the garden that we can apply to real life. And, you know, I think there's a lot of relationships between plants and people. So we're going to show you those relationships. Yeah. 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 Because sometimes we grow in a lot of good manure. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes growing stinks, but in the end, that's how you flourish. So if you guys are wondering, Life Seeds, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see us interact, interact and chat. Um, and if you're listening on a podcast streaming device or platform, that's great too. You can kind of take us with you. I always listen to podcasts in the car. So if that's you too, hello. How will these episodes work? Well, they'll basically work, as Frankie said, we're going to have a little bit of a chat about plants. And then after that, that's when we're going to dig deeper into more of a life segment. And we're also going to have some great guests. But for episode one, we thought we would just introduce ourselves and talk about how we met a little bit. Yeah, so it, it all started way back when, when I got a call and I was talking <laughs> to, I guess, your professor at the time and said, hey, you need an assistant. And I know this wonderful student of mine who's looking to basically get in, break into the world of broadcast media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was Shireen Mansur. I was going to share it in at the time. And she had mentioned that Frank Fairjean of BT was looking for an assistant and I almost fell off my chair. Uh, I was working at the time, going to school and I was like, yep, 100%, I've got time for that. My parents are huge growers. But Frank, as we start going, I kind of want to talk about who we are and why life seeds. So that's deep. That's, that's <laughs> really deep. So yeah. who are we? Well, yeah. who am I? I am a 48 year old male that's <laughs> uh, wrote four different garden books. Uh, I kind of grew up in the world of gardening. I've gone through a lot of transitions in life as well. And when I was 26 years of age, I lost my brother to cancer. Uh, learned a lot of life lessons through that event. Um, had two wonderful boys, which are probably the, 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 the pleasure of my life. Uh, most recently going through a divorce at this time. So gone through a lot of good, a lot of bad. But in between, I really think that uh, it's given me a great ability to reflect on life. Yeah. And for myself, growing up in the country, much like Frank, with parents who have huge green thumbs, I've always been one that's been weeding out in the backyard. But I had a passion for sport. I did volleyball at McMaster and I took science there. And then little did I know it, I actually did not want to be behind a lab bench the rest of my life. I took broadcast journalism and my mantra in life is make your own momentum because I really believe like when I heard that the opportunity came up to work with you, Frank, it was saying yes to that opportunity and just kind of jumping in and making things happen. Like we've been working together for five to six years and our first project was putting videos in Tim Horton's televisions. Doesn't yeah, that Tim's seem like TV. Ago? It does. That was Mullah Rajan's. That was the one that uh, got me involved with that at that time. So, yeah, people come in and out of your lives, and projects come in and out of your lives. And uh, really, that's what we're just all starting to talk about here on Life Seeds about our experiences and how we've grown. And uh, I think we're going to start a little bit off with where things all get started, and that is with the seed. <laughs> Yeah, seeds starting. So normally we'll start each podcast with a peak of the week. So before we dive into seed starting, this is just something good and something for you guys to get to know us a little bit better and follow along with our story. Frank, what's your peak of the week? What's something good? Peak of the week was just sunshine on Saturday. And with the sunshine on Saturday, I went for a two hour hike. I love being in nature. I love going for a walk. Uh, I love that time just for myself. And that was kind of like my peak of the week. It's so simple, but just a little ray of sunshine can give you all the hope and happiness in the world. 
Yeah, being both from the weather world, I was uh, at the Weather Network for four years. We definitely know there's a lot of excitement in a big storm, but there's nothing like a blue sky day. I have to agree, definitely my peak of the week there and starting this podcast. So let's get started with our first segment, Seed Starting. Yeah, so Amanda, have you ever started Seeds? The only time I ever remember actually starting seeds or sowing seeds, as you would say, is Earth Day circa grade five when they basically just gave you a styrofoam foam cup and said, here you go, plant a tree. And I was so jazzed up, Frankie, because my styrofoam cup had like five trees in it. So that was, that was pretty successful. But ever since then, I've basically been someone who's just bought potted plants already existing. And I think that's been working out pretty well for me and then propagating from there. Yeah, propagating, taking a cutting, something like that, rooting a stem. That's another way to create other plants. So seed starting, of course, this is uh, a time of year, usually in early spring to even uh, late winter, people say to themselves, I'm going to start seeds. I'm going to start all these plants because I want to grow them right from the start. I want to know where they came from and I want to save some money. Well, sounds great. You go to the seed rack and wow, all this potential. You look at all the seeds. There's so many bright colors. There's so many different fruits and vegetables. It gets so exciting. It's only $2, it's only $3, it's only $4. You buy 10, you buy 15. Oh, all of a sudden you spent maybe a hundred dollars in seeds. Now you say to yourself, okay, when do I start these seeds? Do I have that space for these seeds? And really do I need that many plants? So sometimes we look with our eyes, but we don't think with our heads, with our head. That's me at the buffet. (laughs) Yeah, it's you at the buffet, right? Yeah. It's like going going hungry. Uh, And that's the whole thing. Number one, if you're thinking about seed starting, number one, you have to realize, do I have time? Number two is, do I have the space? Number three is, do I have enough light? And then number four is, do I need that many plants? So breaking down seed starting a little bit, one of the biggest questions, and if you guys are ever wondering, oh, I've got a very specific question I need answered, who do I ask? Well, at Ask Frankie Flowers on Facebook, that's where you can kind of offload all those questions and we'll try to answer them here on the podcast or on his lives. But one of the very frequent ones, Frankie, is when. When do you start seed starting? Because I think a huge mistake in seed starting is starting too late by accident. Yeah, so the when is, is so a lot of the times people just buy all these seeds and they're like, I'm going to start them all at the same time. Well, you know, if you look at a tomato plant versus a lettuce, like uh, call it leaf lettuce, a tomato plant is six to eight weeks before last frost date and uh, a leaf lettuce would be four weeks. So they got to be started at different times. Then you're saying, well, before last frost date, what the heck does last frost date mean? So last frost date is the last time that you're going to see frost in your area. So to use as an example for the Southern Ontario would be call it May the 15th. So then you count back six to eight weeks from that date. And that's when you're going to be known as your sow date. And the sow date means is simply when you put that seed into soil. So then what you can do is take a look at all the packs of your seeds, look at the recommended sow dates, and some will say direct sow. What direct Mm -hmm. sow means is you're not sowing indoors, you're sowing them directly in the garden outdoors. And a lot of the times it's things like radish, spinach, uh, carrots, even some onions would be a direct sow. So that's the whole idea. Starting at the right time is key. If you start too early, your plants will be too leggy, too weak, too old. If you start too late, well, a lot of the times what will happen is those plants themselves won't be successful. That recipe for success is starting right. Okay. This is a question that I kind of just thought of, because what if you don't have a frost date? Can you just plant your seeds anytime? So then that's when it comes down to different things in terms of heat. So a lot of the times in places, if you're listening to us in Florida and Texas and other areas, there are certain types of plants that'll do well in cooler conditions. So in your winter periods where you may not have frost, plants like arugula and lettuce will do well at that time. And even radish and spinach that I mentioned all those, but those plants in the summer will burn out. So sometimes you're looking at your sow dates all depending upon your temperature. So there always will be better ones that are going to be, you know, a lot of times in some of the Southern states can be ones for winter growing. And then for summer heat growing, you're going to be those plants that love heat units, tomatoes and peppers. Great example that love heat units. Okay. So if I am a brand new little seedling, which is my goal for anyone who is watching this podcast to be called the seedlings, how do I start a seed? Like if you had a checklist, for example, boom, boom, boom. What are the first starting things to do? Okay. First off, if you want to start seeds for the first time, what are the easiest seeds? 
So if you want to start something with kids and have a great time, super easy to start, marigolds. And the reason why I'm going to say marigolds, they're a larger seed, they're easier to handle, they're fantastic for a flowering plant. So let's say that we wanted to do something that's non-flowering, but you want kids to get kids super excited, super involved, use a bean seed and do the whole jack and the beans on the stock. So beans are quite large of a seed. So for instance, when it comes to, let me just turn off my uh, my little beeper there on the phone. <laughs> um, for when it comes to beans, for instance, they're hard shell. So first off, take a look at the seed. You'll see that a, a marigold is a flat seed. Uh, a bean seed is a hard seed. And because it's a hard seed, what you'll do with bean seeds, and you can do this with beans and peas, is you'll soak them overnight. So step number one, if it's a hard shell, you may need to soak it. So in seed starting, there's soaking, stratifying, and scarification. But all I'm just going to talk <laughs> to you about is soaking. So you soak the seed overnight. That's going to improve the germination, make it faster. So all you have to do is then put it into soil. That soil should be moist. And for a seed to germinate, it doesn't need light. Seeds don't really, plants don't really need light until they develop about three leaves. When they get to a three leaf stage, that's when they start to need light. So often when we're doing seed starting, we'll put them in soil. And sometimes we'll even put a newspaper over the top, a moist newspaper that we can put over the top, or we'll even cover with like a plastic hood that creates that greenhouse effect. That's trapping moisture and heat all there. And that actually speeds the process of germinating that seed. But essentially, Seed makes contact with soil, a little bit of moisture, boom, it's going to germinate. If you guys are office fans out there, there's a very specific scene where the one character, Creed, he takes paper towel and he has bean sprouts in his desk. He said they smell like death, but they're very nutritious. So yeah, you can keep them in your desk if you like. <laughs> I know exactly what he's talking about. I sprout mung beans on a damp paper towel in my desk drawer. Very nutritious, but they smell like death. Yeah, and you can. There's many different sprouts that you can do just in paper towel. Yeah. If, if they steered us yeah. right, which it sounds like they did. Okay. So a question for you, I guarantee we've all bought way too many seeds because walking down the seed aisle is so extremely exciting because you've got all the colors, you've got all the potential. And when we talk about life and seeds, we're definitely going to talk about potential because it's all right there within the seed. So I've bought way too many. How do I store them? Can you put them in the freezer? You can, you can actually put them in the freezer and there are some seeds when I talked about stratification, what stratification mm -hmm. means there are some seeds that need to go into a dormancy period before germinating, before sowing the seed. So you got to put them into a plunge period of darkness and cold. So those are the ones you actually have to put in the freezer, but generally to store seeds, you want to put them into um, just a paper envelope and a nice, cool, dry, dark space. That's how you can store them. If you ever want to, if you've stored seeds from year in the past, years in the past, you can do a viability test, which means are they going to germinate or are they not going to germinate? And so what you'll do is you'll put them in water and you'll see if they sink or float. And the ones I believe, I got to check up on this. I'm working off memory right now. The ones <laughs> that, uh, that uh, uh, sink are the ones that are viable. The ones that float are not viable. Oh, I remember. Let me check up on that one. Yes. We'll do that in the fact check after. We'll yeah, yeah, yeah. The fact check to the I'm, trying to, I'm trying to work off my memory, but now I'm getting closer to 50. My memory ain't so good. <laughs> so I was doing a little bit of research on, because we always want to set our, ourselves up for success in life and in growing as well. And I was learning a little bit about after you see your seeds start to sprout, there's a period of time where you have to expose it to consistent daylight before just putting it outside or turning it so that the stems get stronger. Are these all things that are true? 100%. So if you're thinking about uh, putting them outdoors, we do need to harden them off. And harden them off is not just from light, because if you were to put them from indoors right to outdoors in full sun, they'll get a sunburn, they'll die. Uh, but also for cold temperatures. So you're hardening them off. So you're actually putting them outdoors during the day uh, and you're putting them in an area that's not getting full light, but a little bit of light. And you're doing that for a couple of weeks or even a week. So if you get to it, right, seed starting can be a little bit difficult over time. Probably the best way to seed start is to direct sow. Don't pick those seeds that you can directly sow into the garden. And then for tomatoes, for instance, you don't need, if you're a family of four, you don't need a full pack of tomatoes. No, you only need a few plants. You only maybe need at tops four plants, but generally one plant, one tomato plant can feed a family of four. And in my book, Food to Grow, it'll tell you all that information. There's a shameless plug right there too, but uh, I break it down how many plants you need per person for a vegetable garden. I'm 
patient, but also a little impatient when it comes to plants like that. Because if I was going to grow a tomato plant, I think it might be best, especially because the growing season in Canada is so short just to buy the plant. Unless you want a specific variety. So if you're really, you're like, you know what, I'm really into tomatoes and I really want to grow a, an heirloom a Russian tomato, or I want to grow that black tomato. It's a specific variety. Sometimes it's hard to get specifics during the growing season at garden centers. So that's when you maybe want to start some seeds. But if you're just like, hey man, I want to grow a mid-sized tomato. I want to have it for salads and maybe some for sauce and just kind of share some, then you just go to the garden center, look for some healthy plants. And I would really, my favorite tomato is early girl. And the early girl would be a bush variety because it's determinate. It's a mid-sized fruit, early to harvest, fantastic, easy, virus-free. That's my tomato that I would go to. You're an early girl. You're up pretty early for those morning yeah, shows. <laughs> yeah, I am up early. Yeah. My number one um, tip that I've learned from you over the years when it comes to tomatoes, and I know we're talking seed starting, but for some reason, when we talk plants, we always come to tomatoes. <laughs> Is yeah, yeah. basil beside your tomato plant? Chef's kiss. It's going to make it taste so much better. Yeah, that's companion planting, right? And also they repel aphids at the same time so we can partner things up. And you never put tomatoes beside potatoes because oh. they're both from the deadly nightshade family. And because they're both from the deadly nightshade family, they'll get the same diseases, same insects. They'll never put them together. And just to let you know that uh, Tom Brady will not eat tomatoes or potatoes because he will not eat anything from the, uh, from the deadly nightshade family. What? Okay, that's yeah. in my mind. But I don't want to get too off topic because I think that companion planting and just is another that, whole topic. Just that in itself is just like totally something else because that totally applies to life as well. A question I was just scouring through your Facebook page today and looking at all the comments. First of all, if you guys are on there leaving comments, thank you. So insightful, such an amazing community. Mm -hmm. I love it. One of the ones that stuck out to me that I had no idea, nor have we ever talked about, was seeds starting in pots versus peat pellets. What are your thoughts yes. on that? Also tell us, what's a peat pellet? <laughs> so what a peat pellet is, and generally it's Jiffy is the one name that comes to, uh, to mind, but a peat pellet is a condensed um, peat circle, so to speak. Mm. So it's, um, and what happens is the pellet itself, when you put water with it, the pellet expands and grows up. So it becomes like a whole little pot of soil. Wow. So it's just really a whole bunch of peat moss encased in um, almost like I would call it like a little netting that's around there. So when the water hits it, it expands up and then almost it can hug around your seed. Mm. So the peat pellets, um, they're pretty good. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you want to just not do a ton of seeds, you just want to do a few seeds, really fun for kids. So more for a novelty. But if you're somebody that's doing a lot of seeds, you want to use a good seed starting mix like miracle Grow. That's what you want to use there. And I've tested them both side by each. Um, being a peat pellet and the seed starting mixes, generally they'll start at the same time. But the key is, is to cover it. Always cover your seeds with a plastic covering or even something that's going to trap humidity because the ones that are uncovered versus the ones that are covered, there is about five day difference in terms of growth. That's how much you can gain. Wow. It's almost like creating your own little greenhouse. Yeah. 100% so greenhouse cool. effect. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Well, is there anything else specifically that you think you want to bring up with seed starting? A couple things with seed starting, just to recap. So seed starting, number one, make sure you need that many plants. Number two, you have the time. Do you, do you have the space? That's key. Uh, select seeds that are easy for you to grow. Select seeds that are, have a fairly quick germination time, meaning that they're quick to germinate. Many perennial plants can take a month to germinate just the seeds. And if you're thinking about doing something like seed starting for kids, because it's a wonderful activity, do something like a bean, like a pea. And the reason why I would suggest those quick to germinate, easy to grow, and then kids can eat right off them and they're great to harvest. Awesome. We're going to flow right into our mm -hmm. quick fast fact for today's podcast. 
Welcome to our very first fast fact. And in light of our topic today being seeds, I thought that I would take you to a very remote island, something that should make you feel a little bit more comfortable. The Svalbard Global Seed Vault, deep inside a mountain, well above sea level, geologically stable in the area, low humidity levels, and as well protected by permafrost on a remote island halfway between mainland Norway and the North Pole lies the Global Seed Vault. It has the potential to hold some 4.5 million seed samples and the purpose of the vault is to store duplicates or backups really of seed samples from the world's crop collections. Crop diversity is essential for us and life on earth really. It underpins nearly everything that we eat and drink but it's rapidly disappearing. The Crop Trust is actually responding to the crisis threatening the foundation of our food. And basically the seed vault is a long-term seed storage facility built to stand the test of time as we are continuously challenged by natural and man-made disasters. So there you go, our very first fast fact. Amanda, you amaze me. You're, oh. you're, you're so smart. Those facts? <laughs> Well, you have to be fun at a dinner party when we used to have dinner parties. <laughs> yeah, what is that? <laughs> Get over yourself. <laughs> yeah. I hope I have friends by the time this is all over. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, hopefully the pandemic's over soon. Well, okay. Let's talk a little bit about life. This is uh, segment two where we get a little bit, kind of apply seed starting into life because we all start. We all start somewhere. And I always say that we are all like, like a seed. A seed is basically a capsule of an entire plant. So mm -hmm. within that little, little seed has all the abilities to grow a wonderful plant that can provide food, that can provide flowers, that can provide pollination for all the different pollinators that are out there. So seeds are unlimited potential. And if you think about each and every one of us have unlimited potential, but all we need to do is surround ourselves with the right elements to help us grow. 100%. And this part of the podcast as well in future episodes will be joined by other people. We're going to have guests on the show and then Frankie and I will recap after. But for episode one, we thought that we would just talk to you guys about starting because right now we're just starting to side. Wow. Get it together, Mana. We are deciding to start <laughs> this podcast and we're getting our words mm -hmm. together. I'm learning how to talk to people again, Frankie. I've been on my own for a while now. I can understand that. And, and yeah. why, why, why a podcast about gardening and why a podcast about life? Well, there's lots of things that we're all starting. You're starting right now with a podcast. Um, you're starting, you have a, a relationship that you've been in with for a period of time, but yep. you, you moved in together. There's lots of starts that you had in that relationship. I'm ending a relationship uh, in terms of a marriage and looking to see where life takes me next. I feel as though so we're starting a new relationship just with yourself. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. I've learned a lot about myself over this last year. Um, and that's the key. So we have all this potential that's unlimited. And now what we need to do is to put the right elements around us to grow. I'm really excited for this part of the podcast because it's going to be an opportunity for us to kind of dig a little deeper personally, to learn from each other, to learn from our guests, and for you guys at the audience to kind of learn something more about me and Frank that you would never get on any other platform. Right. So when you learn about the two of us, what we both know about each other is that we're people pleasers. Yes. And so that has worked for us in many ways, but also worked against us in many ways. Because if you're only trying to grow with the sun all the time... <laughs> Sometimes uh, it just doesn't work out that way. Sometimes bad weather comes your way and that bad weather, if you're not really protecting yourself, putting a mask on yourself first as the plane's going down, then you're going to put yourself in harm's way. One of the biggest things I think I've learned over this past year now, a, another huge start for me this year, you guys, I just turned 30, literally yesterday. So I am starting a brand new decade. And one of the biggest things, Frank, that I think that I learned being a little seedling in my twenties was to start to put down things that aren't serving me anymore. And whether that be a plant deciding that it's no longer in the right soil, it sets its seeds free up to the wind and kind of travels somewhere new. I think that that's been something that's been so important to me learning in this past decade. So my question to you is, as you kind of broach this new phase in your life in growth, what is something that you want to take away from kind of the last decade? 
takeaway from the last decade is, you know, my, my garden, my personal garden, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's me uh, with those things that either take too much and they're not really giving. So if I look at a garden and if there's a garden and we'll just, we'll use plants as a metaphor. There's a plant in your garden that each and every year, that plant doesn't really power, is no garden interest. All it's doing is that you have to prune it. You need to take care of it. It's also causing you to work that's out there. There's probably a better plant for you. <laughs> and so rid that garden of that needy plant, It's kind of like those needy people in your life. So what I've learned over the last decade is there's people in my life that give me energy, that give me flower, that give me bloom, that inspire me. And then there's other people that have come in and out of my life that really don't inspire me and drain me. A personal garden doesn't be alive. I need to get rid of those needy plants. So when it comes to your own personal life mm -hmm. and it comes to starting, what's an example of something that you just didn't start right, where maybe you didn't start on time? Or an example of something that you you knew that you set yourself up from failure right from the beginning? Ooh, that's such a good question. That's hard to say. Do you almost mean, oh, I think almost when it comes to starting, it's almost like leaving the last phase. I remember I was in a really toxic relationship and it was almost like I was ready to start the new me. And sometimes I think in life, there's a lot of moments where we need to give time to grief whether that be leaving a city you love, you know, a, a home you love living in, a relationship that has completely changed over the past bit. One thing that I halted starting was my new growth. So my new growth out of that relationship was actually getting my own place and reestablishing my independence. And I only wish looking back that I had done that sooner. But I mean, we, we can look... <laughs> the phrase 2020 is so marred now, but truly looking back, everything is 2020. And I think we know when it's the right time for us to start something new. So I think I, uh, I would have loved to start that phase sooner, but I'm proud of myself for doing it anyways. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Because sometimes you have to be, it has to be at the right moment to start. Yeah. So it's sometimes, it, yeah, you need strength. Yes, you need you personal need strength. strength. Yeah. And sometimes too, you look back and you just wish that you had future you. And one of the things that I always tell people when they are in a growth phase is, oh, I can't wait for you to meet future you. You are going to love her or you are going to love him because he or her is just you amplified. And I've always thought that was cool. I was doing a meditation the other day, Frankie, and when we talk about seeds and planting and growth, we often think about those big things like when it's time to finally harvest or that planting moment, and those are the moments of change. But in the meditation, um, he was talking a lot about how change is actually happening every single day. And I had to really sit with that thought because yes, you do see when that new leaf finally opens, but all along that leaf was being created. Paralleling that through life, what's something that you kind of look back on your life and it just was I, such a pivotal so moment. I have a question for you. Yeah, go for Wait, it. I have a question for you. Okay. Meditation. Meditation. Yes. Great. Yeah, really? I love it. I love it. Really? I find it really hard to get to that point. We need to, let's talk about starting. This is something that I would love to start right now. Yeah. Is I would love to start to meditate, but every time I go to start to meditate, I find it really hard for myself to get into that, that phase, like to really become quiet. Okay. You're one of the, you and I are very similar in this way. And I think that's why we get on so well. You do all the things say yes to everything. And I think that quarantine for a lot of people, whether you're a mom running around doing everything for everyone else, or you're someone who is just so focused on their career and have a bunch of things on the go, we don't spend a lot of time just with ourselves. When we're in the car, we want to turn on the radio. We want to listen to a podcast and you are that person. And so meditation, it's one of those things that I definitely find it helpful having a guided meditation. I'm definitely not at the point yet where I could just sit down and be still almost with my plants as still as a plant could be, but it takes practice. Everything in life that is worth having 
or worth doing takes time and learning and practice. And meditation is absolutely no different. It's described as a muscle and you just got to start working it. But what does it give back you to you? It always gives back to me some peace of mind because I have a very much a mindset of, uh, when you're in the world that we're in, and I could say this about anyone being on social media, the things that are the thieves of joy are comparison, things like that, things thinking that you're not doing enough. And meditation truly gives back to me that moment of stillness where I can kind of see my mind from above the trees. And oftentimes I think when we're, we're getting into a phase of thinking and we're thinking just so much, we get engulfed by those thoughts and meditation allows you to kind of pull your head outside or pull your vision or view outside of your thoughts and realize that you are not your thought. You could have a thought looking in the, looking in the mirror and be like, oh, I do not, I do not look good today. I am not good. I am not this, but it doesn't make it true. You are mm-hmm. not your thought. You're just your observer of those thoughts. So it, allow, so it allows you to identify with your inner voice, those little voices inside your head. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I will start. Maybe I will start. Yeah. Yeah. So there it is. Something that you want to start. Something that I want to start. Scotty actually was talking to me yesterday how I desperately need a hobby because um, I read this one meme the other day. It's funny how sometimes we can get such insightful life things by just memes, but it basically said, it's okay to have a hobby that you don't turn into um, a financial benefit. So oftentimes I'll start something new and then I'll think, oh, how could I make money from this? Whether that be drawing or doing or whatever. So something that I want to start, I have a guitar hanging on the wall. I have yet to learn truly how to strum it. So I want to start that. And when COVID opens, kind of, we are healed the earth. I definitely want to get into some improv classes. Oh, a little improv. I think improv. that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. What about you? I would really like to um, learn more Italian because my cousin's getting married in Italy and my Italian is terrible um, <laughs> because my mom's Canadian. My dad's Italian. My mom's name is Dallas. So like my dad's Tony. Hey, my dad's Tony. Um, so I, um, some more Italian because right now all I know in Italian is how to swear and uh, how to say Those prego are the first pronto. words you learn in any language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I know hello, goodbye and how to swear in Italian. That's it. I mean, I'm yeah. sure that would get you through. So my question that I wanted to ask you when we were talking about meditation and change and everything, what's a pivotal moment in your life where you saw a big change kind of when you look back on your life, but then when you take that above the trees look, you can see that it was changing the whole time. So if I look at the biggest change in my life was the loss of my brother. That was probably the biggest change in my life. And, uh, you know, at a big pet picture, as much as that change was profound because that's terminal illness, terminal illness, like we all have a beginning, a middle and end. It doesn't matter whether you're a plant. So we all have a beginning, middle or end. Uh, a business has a beginning, middle or end. And a life has a beginning, middle and end. Some of those are longer, some of those are shorter. And really what that was, when I looked down, it really made me grateful for life and, and living. And I always kind of loved life, but I never loved life more than when I knew how I had to live to honor my brother's life. So the biggest change in my life was the loss of a loved one where I don't even know if I'm still really um, healed after that. So that's probably the biggest thing that's, that's kind of happened. Yeah. I wonder to comparing this to a garden in a way to heal a garden or you, you imagine a forest that goes through a forest fire and that forest fire completely wipes everything clean, every memory that was there. But within a forest fire, there's always new growth after. And I wonder if you've allowed yourself that period of time, like meditation, to even fully dissect your feelings about it because you're such a go, go, go personality. A lot of us just pile on top. Well, that's how a lot of us survive the traumatic experience. We dive into work or we'll go work out more or we'll go just keep ourselves busy. The benefit of what's happened during COVID is it made people actually slow the F down. Yeah. And uh, with that, many of us were just water beetles going all around, but going nowhere. That's a water beetle. Watch a water beetle in the water. It's going all these places. And you think, wow, it's going a long way. No, if you watch, it actually only stays within a meter. <laughs> And just beats around, doesn't really go nowhere. 
doesn't really accomplish much, just burns a hell of a lot of calories. And that's, that's, that's what happens with a traumatic experience is sometimes we try to consume ourselves with so much, we don't take the time to heal or to really even listen, to listen to what your body is saying to you, but listen to what your mind's saying to you, listen to what your heart's saying to you. And often we know what's right and we know what's wrong. We know what changes we need to make. We just don't want to listen. Yeah. I think my armchair perspective from that establishing already, you guys know people pleasers is that one of the best tactics for a people pleaser is avoidance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Across the nation. Sometimes people would say that avoidance, we don't want to avoid conflict. And, you know, I read one book that says that, you know, in terms of relationships, there are child talks where you talk to like, like you're talking to children. So you have really, really soft hands in the way that you, you speak around a conversation. And then there's adult talks and adult talks are where you're just being factual to the point. And sometimes those adult talks are hard to say because you know, you may hurt somebody. Well, you may hurt them just for the moment, but if you hold back and you avoid it, you'll hurt them more long-term. Yeah. And that's what I learned in my relationship. There's probably some adult talks I should have had earlier on that I didn't have because I was just trying to please. And so, you know, it, it just hurt everybody more as time went on. I think that's so relatable because a lot of us have those experiences where we say, oh, if I had only said that sooner, or if I had only left that relationship sooner. And it's almost like, oh no, you actually had to be a little delayed on that to learn that lesson. And that's what you're taking away from it. So I love, we were chatting about this a little bit off camera. I love when you go through a big growth period, that mindset shift of instead of, oh, look at what I lost. It's look at what I took away from it. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the biggest things that we've been talking about and I've been learning from you, but also one of my favorite Frankie quotes actually comes from McDonald's. Can you tell us about it? Yeah. Yeah. Ray Croft. So Ray Croft, founder of McDonald's, a uh, great quote, a quote that I live by as well. It says that if you're ripe, you're rotten. If you're green, you're growing. So think of that. If you're a tomato on a vine and you're so ripe, you will eventually rot. So if you become complacent and you're not learning, you're not growing, then eventually you will rot. So you should always strive to learn. Tony Robbins says it as well. Tony Robbins says one of the greatest things, one of the greatest joys in life is learning. And if you're learning, you're loving. And if you just become complacent and bored and numb, that's when you're going to rot. Yeah. I've learned that saying the phrase, I'm bored even within being at home and quarantine, all that stuff, it just shouldn't apply anymore because there's so many things that we could be doing to learning. And if you're bored, it just means that you may be complacent in that moment. And that, that biggest lesson from the garden is honestly just making decisions for your life and moving forward. This is something I'm constantly trying to get better at, but there are definitely moments in my life, like deciding to travel solo um, across Australia, just to push myself out of my comfort zone. And then realizing that one of the hardest things about that experience was waking up every single day in the hostel, staring at the ceiling and thinking, what do I want to do today? You know, making that decision. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the last lesson I'll take from our little seedling talk. What do you think, Frankie? Any last words? You know what? Just be the seed of potential. And just yeah. with that seed of potential, make sure that you put yourself in the right light, give yourself the right love, the right moisture, and you will grow and you will grow and you will be a blooming good soul. Woo! First podcast. Boom, boom. Oh my gosh, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. If you made it this far, do you think people are still listening? That would be just such a blessing. It'd be great. Maybe they had a really long drive and they're like, wow, that was a big, big storm I went through. So yeah, no, thanks for hanging out with us. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any recommendations, anything like that, um, you know, rate us. If you want to rate us, I think they could rate us too, right? Like give us like a big five star or something like that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, only rate us if you're going to give us five sprouts. Yeah, and if you're not going to give us, yeah, then don't be that manure and get the hell out of here. Well, thank you guys so much for following along with our first episode. Again, it was just me and Frankie, but we are going to have so many amazing guests. This guy, he's got some connections and we're going to be making those connections with the garden and life. Let's plug your Facebook page. 
Yeah, you can go to at Ask Frankie Flowers, at Ask Frankie Flowers on their week ends on Sundays uh, with my Facebook Live. So you can check me out there and I'll answer all your garden questions there. We'll talk a whole little bit more about the world of plants because that's my passion. I'm passionate about plants, wild about weather and family matters to me. And any behind the scenes you can find at Life Seeds Podcast on Instagram. Be sure to rate and review and share us with your friends because sharing is caring. And Amanda, what's your yes. Instagram handle? Oh, mine is at Below the Blonde. Subscribe for our next episode on Wednesdays. They're wild. See you then.